Hello and welcome back to Wisco Trains. Today we're doing something a little bit different and this video will not be a layout update of the N-Scale Modern Green Bay and Western, but will be a bit of a lessons learned video. In my last video, which you can watch in the pinned comment below or click on the in-screen link, I had my locomotive stall and I said I thought I had an issue with a switch. Today I'm going to show you how I diagnosed the issue and found and fixed an issue that I never would have thought would cause a stall. That switch is this one here, my switch that will connect the Green Bay and Western with the Foxy Sneak Off track. It is an Atlas N scale curved code 55 right hand switch. The inside radius is 15 and the outside is 21.5. I have two on my layout and plan on having a third and never have had an issue with this switch or the other. So suddenly one day as I was running an eastbound train, my locomotive stalled out. I gave it a push and thought it was a fluke. Then the next lap around, I had the same issue. So thinking it was due to dirty track, I cleaned the switch and found it was in fact a bit dirty. Again, the locomotive stalled. I ran the exact same train through the other identical switch at speed step 30, my speed limit, and speed step 1, and there were no issues. Must be something with the Foxy switch, right? I then took the locomotive off from the train and ran it backwards and forwards through the switch both east and westbound. No issues. Okay, well, that's weird. I then hooked the train up and ran it westbound. No issues whatsoever. So back to running the locomotive eastbound and stall. So I ran the train through the switch at speed step 3. This time I noticed it seemed like the locomotive didn't stall but derailed once it got to the frog of the switch. The front truck lifted up and caused the train to derail at slow speeds and stall at higher speeds. Looking at the area, this is where two parts of my bench were connected, and despite my best effort, there was a little bit of an elevation change, and I thought, okay, I wonder if that's too much tonnage. Going up the grave on, grade on a curve and causing the issue. So I ran the locomotive through the turnout with just two car cars and a stall. What? One car, just the CN coil car that I had just fixed a coupler on, and stall again. There's no way that one car is too much when a locomotive is fine. Wait a second. I did just fix the coupler on that coil car, and the coupler is connected to the locomotive, I wonder. Turned the coil car around and ran the train through the switch eastbound. No issues. All of that because of a coupler. So I'll be honest, the coupler I used is a Microtrain's Universal Body Mount Coupler. It was definitely not the correct coupler, but I was able to make it work. However, it did cause issues. I've never been one to have an NMRA gauge or to check coupler heights. I just throw it on the track and find if it's working, then it's got to be fine. Moral of the story? Attention to the details, even the boring ones, make a difference in model railroading. 
I've been modeling for close to 15 years and I'm still learning things. So for the new guys in the hobby, don't feel bad when you don't know. And for the old dogs, this there's always new tricks to learn. Even if they're really old tricks. Not sure what I'll be posting next week. I've got some ideas, but it may or may not be a layout update. It might be another video like this of me working on something. Or I've been wanting to try and do a long form rail fan video, so we'll see. If you want to learn more about my layout, check out the pinned comment below. Check out my rail fanning shorts on my YouTube page if that's more your thing, and please like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and have a great rest of your day.